As you enter the lab, make sure to put on all of your personal protective equipment, the same equipment that was discussed in the lab tour. In the event that you ever get a chemical or anything in your eye, you'll need to rinse it out. And to do that, we have what are known as eye wash stations. And there are two types, permanent plumbed in stations and portable stations. This is an example of one of the plumbed in stations. Note the yellow sign. This is the second of the plumbed in eye wash stations. And we'll demonstrate how to use them now. They're very simple. You simply push the yellow lever down. And when you push the lever down, the water should turn on and you'll be left with two jets of water that you can use to rinse your eyes. You hold your eyes open with your fingers, you lower your head so that your eyes are immersed in the water, and you leave them there for about 10 to 15 minutes. Using an eye wash is very uncomfortable. Your eyes go numb, it becomes hard to see, and I really recommend that you try to avoid needing one. The portable eye wash stations are kept on each side of the fume hoods. So we have four fume hood stations, and that means there are a total of eight portable eye wash stations. Using a portable eye wash is also pretty straightforward. You take the bottle down, and then you remove the cap. And once that's done, you simply hold your eye open with your hand, you lower your eye to the cup on the top of the bottle, and you squeeze the bottle repeatedly. The good part about the portable eye washes is that they are portable, so in the event of an emergency where we have to evacuate, you can bring the bottle with you and continue to rinse your eyes even as we leave the room. In the unlikely event that you manage to spill large quantities of chemicals all over you, we also have emergency showers. This one works just like a movable kitchen sink faucet or a bathtub faucet. You simply pull on it, aim it at the part of the body that you need to spray, and squeeze the handle. Also located at the front of the room, we have a second safety shower. This one is easy to operate as well. You simply pull the triangular handle and the shower will turn on. You should note that there are no curtains and there's no drain in the floor. This has two implications. One, please try not to need this shower because if you use it, we end up flooding the geology lab down below. And second, in the event that you do manage to spill something all over yourself, we'll have to cut your clothing off with a pair of scissors in order to make sure you don't pull your shirt up over your face and thereby contaminate your face with the chemicals that are on your clothing. Don't worry, we've got lots of students around. One of them will hold up a fire blanket or a lab coat to make sure nobody can see you. Don't worry though, as far as I know, nobody at UMB St. John has ever needed to use these showers. Sometimes in the lab, you might drop a piece of glassware and break it. In the event that you do, we can't throw broken glass into the garbage where it might accidentally injure a cleaner. So we have to dispose of our sharps separately. And we have a box at the front of the room labeled broken glass, and that's where you should dispose of any broken glassware. In the event of an emergency where we have to evacuate the lab, you always want to shut down any experiments you're working on before you leave. And this can include things like turning off appliances like hot plates, or shutting off propane that we use for our Bunsen burners. If you look along the benches, you should see propane bench valves, and you want to shut these off by turning the handle towards the bench. They can be quite stiff to turn, so you want to give it an extra little twist just to confirm that you've got it all the way shut. Then as you leave the room, you should check the room's main gas valve. When the gas is on, the red light will be showing. And to turn off the gas, you simply push the big red button labeled stop. In the event of a fire, there are three fire extinguishers located around the room. And there's a general rule for working with fire extinguishers. If you need to use more than one extinguisher, you should walk away and let a firefighter handle it. There are also fire blankets around, which you can use to smother fires, although if somebody's clothes are on fire, the stop, drop, and roll method is preferable. To use a fire extinguisher is pretty straightforward. You take it down from the wall, and then you follow the PASS acronym. 
where you pull the pin, you aim the nozzle at the base of the fire, you squeeze the handle, and you sweep across the base of the fire. And there's also a second fire blanket at this location. Sometimes in the lab, you might be asked to work with something that either smells terrible or gives off toxic fumes or both. In order to work with them safely, you use something called a fume hood, which is a large ventilated cabinet that draws the fumes away from the user. Fume hoods have a digital gauge that shows you the air flow rate, and the number itself isn't very important for you. What is important is to only use a fume hood where the color displayed in the gauge is green. If it shows red, you shouldn't use the fume hood. When you use a fume hood, you always want to leave the window down as low as possible. When you raise the window too high, you can lower the airflow rate too much to the point where the fume hood no longer operates effectively. On the side of the fume hood, there's an indicator that shows the maximum height the window should be raised to. But in general, the window should be kept at a much lower height, and it should be closed when not in use.